Okay, I think we've got we've got everybody. Um, so I really liked the ideas that were coming from from my group. Um, I don't know if anyone from the the breakout room that I was in would like to share with the others some of the ideas that they had. If anyone's not too camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we were saying, uh, was explaining different sentences, and basically we used a lot of miming and uh, drawing and bringing them in and showing items like the cooking, so the soap, so they would see that the food and probably the recipe book and the pans, or like the parcel, it was a case of taking them to the door and uh, probably drawing a van and a parcel and you pointing to sign in for the parcel. Yeah, so that's right, yeah. Thanks. Basically, I'm in, I'm in and, and drawing. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. in. <laughs> Thanks. What about the other um, breakout room? Did you have similar ideas? Did you come up with anything different? Well, I was in the other breakout room and um, we, the ideas were really very much the same. Um, miming, drawing pictures, look at using a mobile phone and picking up, finding pictures when relating to the um, parcel, signing the parcel. And so using a picture from of a delivery man maybe or a picture of a parcel and using that to help illustrate yeah but I think the drawing idea was a good one yeah yeah that's a good one if you, you might not have you know a device that you can get images quickly or you know um, I think in our room we were saying that you could you could actually use like if you have a box uh -huh. uh, maybe from a previous um, delivery, you know, you could use that. But if you don't have a box, then, of course, you can, you know, revert yeah. to drawings and that, that they will work as well, you know, to get that meaning across. Um, sorry, did someone want to come in there? Or was that background noise? Not sure. Um, <laughs> the dogs are re-entering. Right, OK. <laughs> um, so I don't know um, anything else um, from the other breakout room that was mentioned. I think one of the issues for his language skills, because he's so shy at using it and getting it wrong, mm -hmm. he tends not, he just verbalises in Russian and then expects me to try and understand what he's doing. He's got one or two one or two words, which is, um, he uses this word called normal, uh -huh. which, which means fine in his language. Okay. So if you tell him his shoelaces have come undone yet again, <laughs> he just goes normal. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got a few verbs. Yeah, but he, but he is, he's, he's, he's actually it. using it partially. Now we've, now we've made a joke of it. He's, he's now uses it as part of his joke vocabulary so so anything that goes wrong it's always normal uh-huh uh-huh so, well, so we're, we're, we're breaking him down to and today we were walking along the large seafront and we they were trying to teach me russian which was great fun uh, oh. and and we were use i was anglicizing everything they 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 taught me so even though it was massively wrong they were falling around laughing yeah uh, the, it's just the, the other side yeah, of but the it was it was well, it was making the language a pleasant experience rather than a torture. Yeah, yeah and that's so important. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. He'll he'll feel much more comfortable with you, and he might feel more ready to try English and make mistakes if you know you're showing willingness to learn some of his language. So that sounds like you know you're doing a really good job. Um, Callum, you want to come in? Yeah, no, I just wanted to kind of um, add that, Robbie, when you were speaking about people speaking um, spoken English, um, we, people, when they're learning a new language, their understanding will come first. 
So sometimes it, it can be difficult to kind of gauge what people already know, because we, I think sometimes we're used to thinking what people produce in spoken language is, is what they know. But when you're kind of going through that, those stages of learning a language, you might actually start build, you, you maybe build up an understanding before you can actually produce the language before. So understanding kind of tends to come first and speaking does eventually emerge. Um, I think as I think as Joanna was saying, and you've obviously you're doing that, making it fun. Don't make it do, not making the making the language learning process uh, uh giving people like maybe hang ups about it or a complex about it. Because sometimes we can feel when we're learning a language, you might feel a bit, oh God, my mouse having to do things that I'm not used to doing. You might feel a bit self conscious. But trying to you know making it fun that's really really important. So that if you're doing that. That's, you know, that's fantastic. Thanks, Callum. I don't know if anyone else has got any other comments or ideas that came out of the breakout rooms. Anything else that anyone wants to share? Yeah, following, following from what Callum was saying there, another thing, having lived in a foreign, in, I lived in Portugal for a while and had to learn the language from scratch. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've been very, very conscious of with people is how easily you can make them feel like idiots. Mm -hmm. And they, um, talking down to them in, a, in an attempt to try and talk in a simple language can sometimes sound like you're patronizing them. Mm -hmm. And um, that was something, I sometimes found myself at times when I was in Portugal and people talked to me like that. I just get so irritated with them because uh -huh. I'm not stupid. I just don't understand. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, and you know, a lot of our guests they're they're intelligent people. Very oh yeah, intelligent people aren't mm -hmm. they? And they could very quickly feel stupid or feel yes. like being treated as if they're stupid. Yeah. And in your experience, Rose, did you feel did you feel that way? quite close to the beginning of your time there or do you feel it was maybe after you had acquired a bit of the language it was um, after I'd acquired it was I always remember that um there was a couple of girls I got to know it was quite a few years ago but quite a couple of girls I got to know and they were very eager to help me mm -hmm. um but sometimes I thought they over helped me and there's times I thought I just want to do this my way and mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the language learning process, everyone learns differently. Yes. Um, you know, that learning styles is very different. And I, t I tended to learn by listening a lot and then sort of uh, getting used to the sounds of the language and the pronunciation, um, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Uh, so, yes, I think, it, but right at the beginning, obviously, I was very grateful for any help I could get. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But it quickly turned to slight irritation because not that I thought I knew better, but just, you know, I felt as if they were trying to control or manage my learning. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, as you said, it's absolutely true that, you know, learning is not like linear, you know, people mm -hmm. learn things at different times. And yeah, people have their own strategies for learning. Mm -hmm. uh, and I suppose the fact that you enjoyed sort of learning through listening that kind of comes back maybe to what Callum was saying that you know sometimes you know people do they need that time to listen and understand it before they will start producing it mm -hmm. um so yeah of course you know it is important to keep in mind who's in front of you mm -hmm. uh, the tips that we've spoken about and mentioned tonight it will depend on, you know, what works for your guest or your learner. You know, I mentioned grading your language, so keeping it simple. But, you know, you'll have a feeling that, you know, if your guest maybe wants more of a challenge, that at that stage they might find that patronising. So you might want to focus more on very sort of natural language, but slowing it down and sort of so that they get to grips with that connected speech. It, it will depend on you know mm. who's in front of you of course yeah yeah the stage they're at yeah yeah and only yeah. only you I'm not know saying that. simple speaking simply is a bad thing uh in any way whatsoever um 
it sometimes I think it was more like the the kind of tone you know yeah now, mm-hmm. you know start treating you like a child <laughs> you know, you've been uh-huh. very- that's yeah 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 tone is so important yeah very so easy. important yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> any other any other comments from the breakout rooms or any it's the only thing i could mention with is is sometimes um uh from point of view understanding how much she actually where the start base is and I'd, I'd take Ross's point about not being demeaning them by teaching too basic, but but perhaps for the case sort of building his confidence up to, to get to that knowledge where he's already acquired it and get him to be confident to use it. And that, that probably might be quite a springboard to, to his future learning. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously with, yeah, with he's only 13, so like the graded readers that, that we have access to are not as relevant to him because he's a teenager. Um, They're probably better uh, than by then, though. <laughs> I have to go. But that might be a confidence thing for him, and we can we can Maybe. read little red hen for a week and say, "Well, that's finished. That's done. You've got that one. Let's move you on to something more complicated." Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we, I think- yeah. I think with 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 the um, uh, she's got quite uh, almost conversation, and we we um, perhaps because we're natural English speakers, um, we we speak at a faster rate than she can always absorb. Sometimes there's a word dropped here and end, and there's a blank look, so you know that she's mm. she dropped a word somewhere, and then of course. One of the things that we're all guilty of is is using expressions in our life that are meaningless to them. Yeah. <laughs> like one one of the classics is is if you if you just even think about chickens, you know, pecking order. Uh huh. You've ruffled their feathers. What does that mean to a Ukrainian? And, and we use these expressions all the time, constantly, and they've they've just combined into our language. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, they don't necessarily translate into the other language, um, but maybe with um, with the girl, the nineteen year old, if her level's good, it's it's probably really good for her to be exposed to those, you know, mm-hmm. expressions of speech. Um, she would just need, you know, you would maybe need to explain where it comes from and why we say that um, mm. for it to have meaning for her. Um, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add about that, Callum. Um, I think just kind of coming back to what you were, what you, <coughs> as part of your presentation in there, John, I'm talking about like grading language. Well, the, we've obviously aimed this session at people with maybe low levels, with low levels of English. So things like ruffled, uh, ruffled feathers. It's maybe trying to find a, a simpler word that encapsulates the same meaning. It, I mean, it could be like annoyed or something like that. And just using that, because I think idioms and, you know, expressions, we use them without even thinking about it. But kind of maybe thinking about that, that might be quite hard to understand and maybe finding a, a simpler um, equivalent can help with the communication. But I think as John was saying, if you've got someone who's got maybe like quite a bit of spoken English, they can cope with um, idioms if you're explaining what they mean. Um, but with people who are beginning to learn English or, or who are new to English, yeah, you, idioms, they can be very, you know, they're not, <laughs> the meaning is not always transparent. No. Um, so it's maybe, it maybe is better to avoid them if you want to have, if your goal is communication. Yeah, I don't want to be henpecked. We keep chickens. Sorry, on you go. No, it says we keep chickens. Oh, oh do you? <laughs> yeah, we have a laugh about all the all the uh, idiomatic expressions for chickens. So people well, use perfect. Yeah, you can you can actually bring in you know the real. You bring in the live prop, the live bird, and show its ruffled feathers, and I'm oh, sure okay. you'll get. You'll get meaning across, no bother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, just one other thing I was thinking when you were saying you're not sure how to maybe gauge 
is it a bit shyer mm. maybe sort of finding out what his interests are and then using them as a way to sort of help him learn English mm. um so I don't know for example you know if you know he liked a specific sport or something mm. then you could actually do that sport or watch that sport and then while doing it or watching it talk talk about it and try and get you know maybe him to talk about it and if he's interested in it he's probably more likely to be motivated to to communicate with you about something we've been doing that I had, okay I had him, I had him uh, watching the formula one race okay <laughs> and I was shouting go Lewis go Lewis and he was picking that up and he was jumping in his chair too so the excitement and the language had transferred across. Uh, but he's, a, he's also a gaming boy. Right. So that's diff more difficult because he disappears into his gaming machines. And it's it's a common thing for all his age group. And also, yeah. you just need to draw him away from it a little because bit. Because his communication skills as well. Yeah, I think. yeah. Well, e even there, I mean, maybe getting him to talk about his favourite game, if that's really his thing. Um, mm. A lot of, yeah, maybe people in the younger generation do actually learn a lot of English from video games. Um, you know, I have friends that, you know, they did do English at school, but they basically couldn't speak a word. And then they, they learnt through playing because, again, that's something that he really enjoys and motivates him. Um, so if he's not showing signs of coming away from the computer, maybe somehow that could be used. You know, maybe you can ask him even about what game is he doing? You know, what, what's he playing? And and see if you can draw language out that way. Um, it's just an idea. Mm -hmm. We're doing our best. <laughs> I'm sure you are. It sounds like you're doing a great job. I mean, you know you're you've really welcomed them and you're making it fun for them and that's that's the most important thing there's probably a lot of in, in um things to watch in the commonwealth games that might come at me actually mm. well i was i was then saying it was at the olympics i thought he might know the olympics if he doesn't know the commonwealth game word um but uh, yeah that's on a seven o'clock isn't it or eight it's probably on now actually yeah yeah you know very useful session a lots of uh insightful you know tips and information thank you very much uh that was interesting yeah. so, thank you for that arena and i think leanne's put some um resources in the session uh, into the chat um, I'm just mindful of the time, so what we'll do, we'll collate all the resources that we've spoken about today and we'll email that out to everybody. And if you've got any other questions, please don't hesitate to get in contact um, with either myself or Joanna, um, and we hope the resources will be, you know, will be useful. And we hope the session has been useful for you this evening as well. So we'd like to thank you for, for coming along. It's been nice to meet people face-to-face. -face or face to face virtually, if you know what I mean. Um so yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. Thank you very much for coming along and for all your input as well. Okay. Well thank, thank you for your help and uh, thank we'll you very much. Thank you. Use and the resources will be very useful, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and good luck, yeah, good luck with um your your guests and getting to know them and, and helping them. It sounds like